My name is Steven Sindoni. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Legends of Mount Shasta. In our broadcast today, we will discuss Queen Etrusiana from an Abraham Mansfield book entitled The Golden Goddess of the Lemurians, with excerpts from Emily A. Frank's book entitled Mount Shasta, California's Mystic Mountain. The late Abraham Mansfield had a story to tell. He believed that Lemurians flourished in the Mount Shasta area, and he wrote a book in which he revealed the secrets of the Lemurian gold mines and also the circumstances which led to his unorthodox appointment and coronation as chief of the gods of the Lemurians, an honor which enabled him to view what he called the plates of time which deal with mathematical equations and dimensions of secret solar control of atomic energy. Abraham Mansfield also claimed that he was in possession having received one-sixth of Queen Etrusiana's jewels. Who was Queen Etrusiana? And how does it fit into this story? I will explain it to you as Abraham Mansfield himself, the author of the book, explained it to Emily A. Frank. Emily Frank was writing for the Dunsmere News, a small weekly newspaper in extreme northern California, when his book, The Golden Goddess of Lemurians, came out in 1970, and he sent her a copy of it. Along with the book, Abraham Mansfield sent enough strange material on Mount Shasta to fill four large manila envelopes. Some of the material was confusing to Emily A. Frank, but Abraham Mansfield swore it was all true. Mansfield said the plates of time are the treasured and ancient sciences of God from the very beginning and relate to a people deceased thousands of years ago. They dwelled on a chain of islands which sank into the oceans which we know now as the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. They were islands which included Etrusia, Lemuria, Atlantis, and Oceanus. According to Mansfield, these prehistoric civilizations had far greater knowledge than we do of atom power, ESP, electronics, and science, and could pick up messages that were recorded in time and space from back civilizations to the beginning of time. He said that Etrusian Lemurian story and the plates of time had been around for thousands of years, and his theory was as follows. Down the dim corridors of the ages, the world was different than it is now, and many islands flourished, which have since sank to the bottom of the oceans. Among them were the above-mentioned islands, and they were ruled by Queen Etrusiana, as was the entire world as it was known then through a Ten Nations Council. Her husband, the king, was interested in other things. He was a great scientist and spent much of his time viewing foreign planets, building pyramids, and great towers. It appears, however, that the king was sterile. Queen Etrusiana wanted sons to rule the world, so she took the ten kings of the Ten Nations Council, one at a time, and produced six sons and one daughter. Thus, endowed with future kings, she and her sons would continue to rule the world. Queen Etrusiana's plan was interrupted, however, when the Ice Age started. Mansfield claims in his book that the world tipped from north to south, throwing the south pole of the equator on the opposite side of the earth. In the chain of events, he wrote, all the ocean's currents were forced to flow northward. Quoting Mansfield, it was like a giant trowel around the center of the earth with a rim on both sides and the middle. Knowing of the impending disaster, Queen Etrusiana and her king ordered 10 million Etrusians and Mongols to build reed boats with a light wooden structure. These boats were designed to hold 10,000 people and enough food to last until they could get to the top of the ice flow and recede with it. Then, when the expected second tip of the world came, all that could boarded the boats and headed north. According to Mansfield, North was safest because the safest place at the time of the Ice Age was at the top of the ice flow. Some took refuge on the highest parts of what is now South America 
at one time Etrusia, and then some took refuge on any high land which protruded above the water. At the time of the disaster, Queen Etrusiana decreed that her six son kings would be kings forever in heredity, even from the world beyond. The survivors of the Ice Age diligently kept records of the descendants of these sons through mental seances in order to find the rightful heirs to rule as the chief of the gods of Lemurians, a reign, said Mansfield, that changes every 30 years, even now. Also decreed was that the Inca nation was to train their chiefs, find the rightful king in heredity, and entrust to them the scientific knowledge of the place of time so as to keep the knowledge on the place forever alive, or to quote Mansfield, until our present civilization should become as enlightened in sciences as were those who lived before them. The manner in which Abraham Joseph Mansfield became chief of the gods of Lemurians was, as he said, through mental seances. And so it was in a bizarre chain of events that Mansfield became chief of the gods of Lemurians in 1934 in a ceremony performed at sunrise in the wilds of Del Norte County at the throne which was situated east of the Lemurian Monastery under the cliffs at the heads of Bluff and Blue Creeks near Cinder Cone Peak. In that ceremony, Mansfield claims the honor entitled him to one-sixth of Queen Etrusiana's jewels and also ownership to a most valuable Lemurian gold mine within the deep recesses of Mount Shasta, a shaft in which gold hung like icicles. This privilege, he said, was handed down to him through heredity from the ancient and enlightened Etrusian, Lemurian, and Atlantean civilizations. His reign ended in 1964 after 30 years and he decided to write about it. What's more, Mansfield claimed he had Queen Etrusiana's jewels to prove it. Mansfield had a bracelet with Etrusiana engraved inside of it. The ornate bracelet is designed with 10 major crowns and 26 lesser crowns which represented the large and small nations of the world as it was when she reigned. He said Queen Etrusiana wore this bracelet at all the meetings of the Ten Nation Council which were held on the island of Etrusia. Also in Mansfield's possession was royal platinum serving wear embossed with angels plus the Queen's coronation bracelet, a pendant, other jewelry, and an actual faded likeness of prehistoric Queen Etrusiana. Since Abraham Mansfield's passing, other stories have appeared unexpectedly which seems to corroborate his story. J.C. Brown, alias J.B. Body of the Legend of J.C. Brown, also believed that he had found the mummified remains of Queen Etrusiana under Mount Shasta. Ancient history is waiting patiently to be revealed. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of Who Was Queen Etrusiana?